All right, hello everybody. I wanted to start off with a review of the steam tables. So let's jump right into it. There are four tables, and you'll see that we didn't really use uh, anything but tables one and two for this course. So I haven't gotten, I didn't get into table four or table three. We didn't really play around with superheated steam at all. Uh, but we did do a lot with saturated steam and with the yeah saturated steam, which is tables one and two. Tables one and two are the same. They're just set up with a different starting point. Table one's the left far left column is temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Whereas table two, the far left column is pressure in pounds per square inch absolute. So whichever one you have to start, and you're trying to find it's you know if you're trying to find the temperature uh, saturation temperature for a given pressure you start with table two with your pressure uh, you can do it either way right if I if I know that a temperature is 360 degrees Fahrenheit I can come here and look for 360 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if I'm not using that far left table, I'm not going to get exactly 360 degrees Fahrenheit. But its corresponding saturation pressure is 154 PSIA. Now, if I go to table one and I look for 360 degrees Fahrenheit, yep, 153 degrees. So it's more accurate because. Yeah. Anyway, so that's the, the temperature pressure. That's table one, table two. Those are the ones we use. So table one and two have nine columns. These first three columns is that weird little F, uh, specific volume. And if you remember, specific volume, let me get scratch paper here. Specific volume is one over density, which is that row sign. And density equals 1 over specific volume. And we use that a lot. Uh, we have a couple of equations such as pressure equals um, density times gravitational acceleration times height. Right? And if we are rearranging for, I feel like I'm jumping around on this, but this will be good notes for your equation sheet. If instead of solving for pressure, if I have a pressure and I'm solving for height, I rearrange the question, the equation, right? So I move the density over to here. So it becomes pressure over density. I move the gravity over, over gravity equals Z. Well, this is convenient because one uh, specific volume is one over density, right? And so anytime you have uh, this is saying the same as pressure over gravitational acceleration and one over density. So I could just re I could write this as I could get rid of that density and just write specific volume times pressure over gravity. So use think about that when you're messing around with density and specific volume, they are interchangeable in this way. If density is on the bottom of an equation, it's the same as, over here, if density is on the bottom of an equation, right, in the denominator, then it's the same as just putting specific volume in the numerator in the top of the equation. Um, all right. Yeah, jumped around a little there already. So we have three different phases of a fluid. We have the V sub F, V sub F G, and V sub G. F is the liquid. And it's liquid at saturation conditions, right? It's exactly at the point where any additional heat will now start to change its state. It's latent heat of vaporization it'll start to go through the phase change so if you think about our Molier diagram 
it's right on this red line down here where any additional heat starts to convert it into a steam actually and it's better shown with a, a temperature entropy diagram all right which is a big curve like that and this is all the sensible heat addition and this is the saturation curve all right and temperature entropy Temperature goes up as we add heat until we get to this point, V sub F. As soon as we're at that point, we start going through the phase change where this is all V sub FG, V FG. Until we get to the other side of that saturation curve, which is V sub G. And then at that point, it's 100% quality at that point. It V sub G is 100% quality. And so any additional heat after that, now we're in superheated steam. And sensible heat, it's sensible heat, temperature goes up. That's what these three columns are saying. So that question I give you once in a while where, hey, try and figure out, are you down here, are you in here, or are you here? Uh, this is why it's important, because you have to know which of these to use. Um, the next set of columns, next three, is ent enthalpy, and it's the exact same, right? We have enthalpy of a fluid. The cool property about enthalpy is that the enthalpy of a fluid that's subcooled is the exact same as the enthalpy of the fluid at, v, at uh, H sub F. I'm going to redraw this. Still a temperature entropy diagram. Still have our saturation curve. I even brought a red pen so I could do this. That's our saturation curve. Um, even though the temperature's changing when it's subcooled, it's a constant enthalpy process. So the enthalpy lines are going to run. Uh, well, not that way. The, the enthalpy lines will run like this on the sensible heat addition. So this is all the same enthalpy as this point. H sub F. Enthalpy of the fluid. In here, it's H sub FG, which is two phases, right? It's mixed flow, the fluid gas mixture. <clears throat> and exactly how much of it is fluid and how much of it is gas depends on the quality. And then once it gets here, this is now H, whoops, H sub G. Okay, the enthalpy of the gas, and that's 100% quality. In that video uh, Jim did, he showed you how to solve for the enthalpy in here, because you can't just use that value directly. All that H sub FG is saying, all this, in fact, the specific volume, all it's saying, and all this is saying, is they subtracted this value from this value to get that. They subtracted this value from this value to get that. So this is the change in enthalpy. This is how much it's going to go through in here. It's the difference between this point and this point is that middle column. But when you're looking for what the enthalpy is in total here at this point, let's say 80% quality right here then it's 80% of that H sub FG plus whatever was over here. So what I'm saying is, uh, let's just pick, let's pick any one of these. 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we have a steam water mixture of 80% quality at 320 degrees Fahrenheit. What's the enthalpy? Well, the enthalpy is the enthalpy of the fluid, 290.4, 20 degrees Fahrenheit, 
um, at 80% quality equals enthalpy of the fluid plus 80% times the change in enthalpy equals 320 is 290.4 BTUs per pound mass plus 0 0.80 times 895.0 and I just realized the only thing I'm not prepared with here is a calculator. So 80% of this, hey Google, what's 80% of 895? The answer is 716. 716 BTUs per pound mass plus 290.4. So our enthalpy is 1006.4 BTUs per pound mass. I hope that better shows you what these columns mean, what this H sub FG means, um, and how to use it. I don't recall a specific problem on that, but don't, yeah. Anyway, you, you need to know that. You need to understand what it's asking for. And it's a nice way to check your work because you can also, uh, as long as the values are on the Mollier diagram, you, you can use the quality or the moisture content lines, right? And the pressure, the constant pressure, so 320. Uh, well, of course, we have a temperature and not a uh, pressure. So I would have to look up what the saturation pressure is for 320 degrees Fahrenheit, which I... I think it was 89, 89.7 pounds. So that 89.7 pounds is right below the 90 here. Get pencil. And 80% quality is 20% moisture content. So here, so 20% and 80, 90, 89.7, so we're actually up here somewhere. So if I run that across, yeah, look at that, about 1,005. And that's with a lot of error in here, right, because it's not as exact as the steam tables. 1,005, 1,000, and I know I'm just slightly above it. So 1,006 BTUs per pound mass. So you can, if you're starting on the Mollier diagram, you can start here and then check your work on the steam tables. Or if you want, if you know how to do the steam tables, you can just do this and get a more accurate answer. Um, we haven't done anything really with the entropy. So, but I have seen a couple of you use this entropy column um, we are more concerned so entropy is the amount of energy unavailable to do work right we're not really interested in what's not available what we want to know is what's available to do work and that's kind of what the enthalpy tells us the enthalpy is what can be converted uh, you know, how much energy do I have that can be converted from kinetic energy to thermal energy or uh, other work output, flow energy, and this is more of what's available for that. Okay? So make sure you're not using entropy when we're asking for enthalpy. And... I've seen some of you use temperatures like uh, the steam pro or the turbine work problem where I give you 542 degrees Fahrenheit uh, as a saturated liquid, right? As a cool reactor coolant going in, which means you're down here. 
So for 542 degrees Fahrenheit, you would be using this value, 539.2 BTUs per pound mass. But for the steam, when I say saturated steam, that means steam, dry steam, steam at 100% quality. This coffee is not kicked in yet. So 562 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm giving you this point here, which is this value. So it's the difference between these two numbers multiplied by the mass flow rate is how you solve that steam turbine problem. Uh, steam turbine, yeah. Turbine work problem. Anyway. All right, I hope that gave you a quick overview of this. Don't worry so much about this entropy column, these, enter these entropy columns. We are focused with, we use specific volume quite a bit. We use enthalpy quite a bit. And we use tables one and tables two quite a bit. All right, that was longer than I wanted, but uh, yeah, I'm going to take a break, get some coffee, and I'll start. Uh, my next one's going to be the water, yeah, the water tank problem, and I'll do that a couple different ways. All right, thanks.